one million, so about 4% of that 22 million registered voters in California selected a language preference other than English. Language preferences identified in the voter file offer an incomplete picture of the language needs of registered voters in California. You see us thinking about language access because we really see it as instrumental to one, transparency and accountability. Language access, I think, improves democracy. I think no one can doubt that if you provide translated election materials and if people can vote in their own language, then you are promoting the ability to have a more uh, informed electorate. If a person speaks Arabic, Somali, Armenian, Ukrainian, and a whole host of, of other languages that does not fit in the federal categories, then they are not entitled to any language services under federal law. And the other limitations with federal law is that it has to be reauthorized from time to time. What we've seen is when families struggle to get these basic necessities, when you're struggling to get language access at your appointments or at the DMV or any other kind of agency, right? When you talk about voting and then having to overcome another barrier, that kind of falls to the wayside. We can't have it be something that's only on the side, that's an afterthought, that is if we have time or money, we'll get to it. It really has to be woven throughout the conversations of policy. Um, it has to be a lens that you look at when you're talking about elections related work instead of an afterthought. We need to pass policies at the local and state level. There needs to be the will to do that. Um, and we need to be bold and courageous.